A recent interview between UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Piers Morgan has sparked a wave of criticism and amusement. Picture this, the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak decides to sit down for a chat with Piers Morgan, a decision that has since been analysed, criticised and, in some quarters, ridiculed. The interview was conducted on an obscure television channel, far from the usual polished and controlled media setups we've come to expect from our politicians. Now, the interview began innocently enough, with a bit of casual banter, a few laughs here and there, but then things took an unexpected turn. Morgan, ever the provocateur, ambushed Sunak with questions about immigration and the UK's policy on Rwanda. To say that Sunak was caught off guard would be an understatement. But the real kicker, the moment that really got people talking, was the bet. Yes, you heard that right. A bet between the Prime Minister and Piers Morgan over whether Sunak could successfully send asylum seekers to Rwanda. It was a bizarre moment, one that left many viewers scratching their heads, wondering if this was a new low in political discourse. The reaction was swift and unanimous. Critics pounced on the Prime Minister's unprofessional conduct, lamenting the lack of sound advice from his communication team. Social media was ablaze with memes and jokes as people dissected every second of the cringe-worthy exchange. In comparison to previous Prime Ministers, Sunak's behaviour was considered out of character. It's hard to imagine any of his predecessors engaging in such a spectacle, let alone placing a bet on a serious issue like asylum policy. It was a move that many considered not just ill-advised, but downright disrespectful. This interview has certainly raised eyebrows, prompting questions about Sunak's media strategy. Rishi Sunak's appearance on an obscure channel and his bet with Morgan has led many to question his media strategy. The Prime Minister's choice of platform for this interview was, to say the least, unconventional. Previous Prime Ministers, whether for better or worse, have leaned towards traditional mainstream channels for their media engagements. This afforded them a certain level of control over the narrative and a guaranteed wide audience reach. Sunak's deviation from this norm is puzzling and raises questions about the guidance he's receiving from his communications team. The implications of this interview for Sunak's reputation are potentially significant. The casual banter that began the interview and the subsequent bet over a serious policy issue have led to some viewing Sunak as unprofessional and out of touch. This is a stark contrast to the reputation he had been building as a serious, policy-focused leader. The fallout from this interview may have lasting effects on his public image and credibility. So what could Sunak do to improve his media strategy? For starters, a return to more traditional media platforms might be a wise move. These platforms reach a broader audience and allow for more control over the narrative. Additionally, preparation for interviews needs to be taken more seriously. Being caught off guard by difficult questions can undermine a leader's credibility. Finally, Sunak should reconsider the tone he sets in these engagements. A balance must be struck between appearing approachable and maintaining the gravitas expected of a Prime Minister. Sunak's media strategy may need a rethink if he wants to avoid further controversy. It's a delicate balancing act, maintaining authenticity while also projecting the seriousness and professionalism that the role of Prime Minister demands. One thing is clear though, the stakes in the world of political media strategy are high and missteps can have lasting impacts. Beyond media strategies, Sunak's role as Prime Minister involves addressing serious national security issues. One of the most pressing issues he's currently facing is the criticism that the UK is not doing enough to stop Iranian terrorists. This criticism comes from those who have experienced firsthand the terror inflicted by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps or the IRGC. One such individual, a survivor of the IRGC's campaign of terror, has shared their harrowing experiences. They've recounted the credible threats on their life and assassination attempts they've had to endure. The magnitude of this threat is far from insignificant. MI5, the UK's domestic counterintelligence and security agency, has revealed 15 credible threats in the UK since the start of this year alone. These experiences underscore the urgency for decisive actions against the IRGC. The survivor has called upon Prime Minister Sunak and President Biden to take such action. A key demand is the prescription of the IRGC as a terrorist organization. This would not just be a symbolic move, 
but a strategic one that could disrupt the operations of the IRGC. Sunak's response to this call to action will be crucial. It's not just about one survivor's plea, but the safety and security of UK citizens at large. How he addresses these national security threats will significantly impact his tenure as Prime Minister. Sunak's handling of national security will be a key factor in his success as Prime Minister. There's no doubt that Sunak's term as Prime Minister is under the microscope. We've explored his controversial interview with Piers Morgan, scrutinised his media strategy and delved into his role in national security. The importance of an effective media strategy and adept national security handling cannot be overstated for a Prime Minister. Sunak's actions and decisions are shaping the UK's political landscape. The stakes are high, the world is watching. As we continue to monitor Sunak's term, remember to subscribe for more insightful analyses on current events.